Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be looking at the Once Upon a Book Club Halloween Edition Spooky Box. Once Upon a Book Club does Halloween special edition boxes every year. This time they had a spooky and a sweet. They usually do have two different versions as far as I can remember. It is my first time getting the Halloween edition boxes this year and this one is the spooky version and I cannot wait to see what's in store. This one did cost more. It was $59.99 for the box where the sweet one was only $49. This one is the adult fiction version. The other one was the young adult version and I have both of them. So they will be posted probably back to back. I've already unboxed the young adult version and I was very, very happy with it. I thought the items were good and usable and I hope that they did exactly the same thing for the spooky version and maybe there'll be some higher ticket items in here that would explain why it cost $10 more. The box itself looks bigger, which tells me that there's maybe some bigger gifts or maybe a long gift in here that wasn't in the other one. Ah, we have our book club kit. Go ahead and get that open and ready. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Then we have the gifts. This is very heavy, page 190, page 67, page 26, and then page 45. So a lot of them are right close together. You didn't have to read very far in this book at all in order to be able to open up three of the gifts. And then there's the book itself, which <laughs> it's funny. It's kind of comical that it's pink just like home, because there's like blood dripping from the house, but no, it's this pretty gorgeous pink color where everything's supposed to be happy and fine. Same thing with the other Halloween special edition box. They have matched the wrapping to the book itself. You have the pinks and then the blood stains, and we'll just see how this one goes. Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, author of The Echo Wife. Just Like Home is a darkly gothic thriller from nationally best-selling author Sarah Gailey. Perfect for fans of Netflix, The Haunting of the Hill House, as well as HBO's true crime masterpiece, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Come home, Vera's mother called, and Vera obeyed. In spite of their long estrangement, in spite of the memories, she's come back to the home of a serial killer, back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies he buried there. Wow. Coming home is hard enough for Vera, and to make things worse, she and her mother aren't alone. A parasitic artist has moved into the guest house out back and is slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. He insists that he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There are secrets yet discovered in the foundations of the notorious Crowder house, Vera must face them and find out herself just how deep the rot goes. I remember thinking this was gonna be a very intriguing read. I wanted to see how the writer portrayed the emotional turmoil that Vera has to be going through with having a serial killer father. Like that's gotta be an incredibly hard dynamic to write. I just wanna see how it is. So I am actually gonna start reading this one today. I had finished my other books and I need a new one when I go in to work, so this is gonna be it. I am gonna go ahead and press on with the unboxing though, instead of waiting, because I wanna get the Halloween special edition boxes out. I am so happy that they arrived before Halloween. That's a big deal. And with every book club kit, you will get a bookmark that reminds you not to open the presents until you've read to that page. On the back, it will have the same quote print over here, which says, it's a well-built house they live in. It absorbs noise hides light, keeps secrets. It wouldn't betray her, not ever. That's interesting. <laughs> we have the book plate that is autographed by the author, and then the book club kit itself on the back. Oh, it has facts about the top 10 haunted houses in America. Very cool. The inside has the conversation with the author. You have the discussion questions, and then it tells you when they're gonna be unboxing. No, it doesn't even tell you when. 
it tells you where they're going to be unboxing the gifts on what social media platform. Let's go ahead and start this unboxing with page 26. Vera pressed the bed sheets to her chest and blinked again, harder this time. While her eyes were shut tight, the fingers of her right hand twitched around the screwdrivers. Her hand was full, so she couldn't snap one, let alone four times. But her dust smeared thumb and middle finger tried futilely to move toward each other anyway. It basically just mentioned screwdrivers. Her hand was full, so she couldn't snap once let alone four times. For some reason, she must have, you need to be able to snap. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know what else is going on. And that's the problem with not being able to read before you open the gift. But it did mention a screwdriver, which kind of makes me think that this is a screwdriver. Oh, it's a very girly screwdriver. I mean, screwdriver it is, but it has a very nice florally design. I've never seen a screwdriver like this before. This is very cute. I don't know if that's showing up because of the glare, but I will definitely post a picture and I will be putting this together because I do keep a screwdriver in my nightstand close by. Usually I'm moving around pictures and wall art and stuff like that and I need one and they come in handy. And that's a nice pretty one for me. <laughs> it goes along with the pretty pinks that are coming in with this theme. All right, next is page 45. She hooked her fingers around the thing inside of her and carefully, slowly, so it couldn't slip out of her grip, she pulled. It unspooled fast and sudden like a fish sliding out of a net. Oh. She let out a sob of relief as the long gray rope fell to the floor with a wet laundry splat. But she was still so cold. Her relief turned to dismay then crystallized into determination. It wasn't all out of her yet. There's a lot going on in this book. That was like creepy, but at the same time, I was completely lost. Have no idea. Like, what is this even supposed to be? Oh, it's a rope spider web. Okay. Maybe this is like decorative. Look at it. Oh, it feels velvety. If it is like a giant spider web, I will try to get it displayed somewhere and take a picture of it for you guys so you can see it. It's a more of a decorative item. It's not as usable as a screwdriver. I don't really have a lot of decorative things and maybe I need to get more. Maybe I need to be more decorative. I was just been talking to my husband about that lately. I'm trying to redo some of the decorations and paint inside our downstairs so that I can be more fluid with the filming, move around a little bit more, and maybe it's time to embrace the decor. Just let it all in, you know? <laughs> okay, moving on to page 67. She held the thermos over the countertop and shook it hard from side to side until the little cylinder of paper stopped catching on the inside of the lip. It fell out and rolled nearly to the edge of the counter where Vera caught it in her palm. It was the size and length of a cigarette. Really, Vera thought, she should have mistaken it for a cigarette at first, except that as far as she knew, her father had never smoked. So this one is in the shape of a tumbler. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably some kind of thermos or tumbler of some kind. And it is, oh, it's a spooky version with spiders and spider webs and ghosts that almost look like the ghosts in Pac-Man, only they're not colored. <laughs> and it is for sure a thermos and not just a standard tumbler. And of course they put something on the inside. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it out though. It's curled up in there pretty deep. If I can get it out when I'm doing pictures, I will unroll it and let you see what it looks like, but I can't reach it from here and I don't have anything long enough to grab it. The thermos itself does feel like really good quality. Probably one of the better quality ones I've received in some boxes. It is heavier, it has a thicker wall. It's not very tall, so I don't think it would hold that much liquid. And if it can hold both hot and cold, this may be something I can store like hot chocolate in. Fun thermos to add to my mix this Halloween, which is another great thing about getting this box on time is now I can basically enjoy it for the entire month of October. Lots of time to use it. All right, the last one is page 190. 
whatever is in there, it feels soft. She told herself that it was only her subconscious, like her nearly sleeping brain, startling with the phantom sensation of falling. But now she was awake, heart poundingly awake, and she couldn't tell herself that she was imagining the sensation of the quilt stretching taut. She tightened her grip on it and the pull of the fabric grew stronger. The pull was coming from the side of the bed. Stitches snapped beneath her palm. Pop, pop, pop. Vera's hand reflexively flew open at the sensation and the quilt was dragged off of her, vanishing over the edge of the mattress. She listened to the hush of the fabric against the floorboard as it slithered beneath the bed. Oh, okay. That's like the creepiest thing I think we've read so far, other than when they were describing the thing that was wrapped around her, like it wasn't supposed to be a spider web, they just gave us a spider web. That was, that's some really creepy stuff going on. I didn't think that this one was supposed to be like haunted that way. Wow, so it's like a different twist. It's not even just about the fact that her father was a serial killer. The house itself may actually be haunted. Okay, page 190. They have that drawstring on there real tight. And I'm sorry to have to break it, but I'm just gonna have to cut into it because I don't have time to pull it apart. And we have a blanket, I think. It is a Ouija board blanket. It's not very long, so you can see it is pretty wide, so it would be longer if you had it like this. And it is dual sided, so you have the black on one side and then the white side. The blanket itself seems to be made out of pretty nice quality. I don't know who stitched it or made it, but it does feel like a heavier type blanket. It's not soft material as far as a buttery soft blanket. It's like maybe a throw blanket. It does have little tassels on the end right here. I don't know how to describe the texture. I am drawing a blank, I'm trying to find a reference, but I can't. Just, it's a blanket, it's not made of fleece. It's not a fleece blanket, it's not a quilt blanket. It's not a rough blanket, and I think it would keep you warm. It's also probably meant to be more decorative. I understand why they went with Ouija. I guess the Ouija boards are pretty creepy. They're not my favorite thing. I don't tend to keep hardly anything Ouija related, so this will probably be in a giveaway for sure. And it seems to be a nice quality blanket, so that's good. And maybe because we got a big blanket like this and with the nice stainless steel thermos that we got, probably explains a little bit of the price difference. I think I liked the gifts in the young adult box better than this one, but I do think that this one still had a great assortment of items. Blanket, thermos, decor, spider web, and a really beautifully decorated screwdriver. I am happy about that screwdriver. That is really cool. And I'm happy with this book. I am still gonna read it. It does seem like it's gonna be a lot more creepy than what I had first anticipated but reading through some of those parts makes me wanna read it even more and see what's really going on with this house and how that house may have impacted her dad. So lots of things to consider here. Let me know your thoughts of this Once Upon a Book Club Halloween edition spooky box unboxing down in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back soon with more videos. Bye everyone.